Good evening, my brothers and sisters. Just a little uh, adjustment to my introduction. I am the coordinator for uh, LCSE uh, World, uh, World East. So I'm covering, coordinating the work of LCAC for Asia and Oceania. And just recently, I was retired from the Philippine Council, uh, MFC, uh, National Council, and then uh, Servant Council. And so uh, I'm focused now on LCAC work. The title of our talk today is really about evangelization, the spirituality of Pentecost. Just to take note, yesterday there was one, one of the prophecies uh, quoted Isaiah 45 verse 2. And the Lord said, I will go before you and level the mountains. Bronze doors I will shatter. Iron bars I will snap. Beautiful, because in evangelization, it's exactly what the Lord is doing. Because the, the Lord is really telling us in Isaiah 45, it's, I will be before you. I will lead you the way. I will pave the, the way for you. And if there is any resistance from the enemy, I will shatter that resistance. And then just today, one of the prophecies was beautifully given. And... The, the prophecy states, for we are his handiwork created in Christ Jesus for the good works that God has prepared in advance that we should live in them. From Ephesians 2 verse 10. All of this telling us that God really wants us to go for the mission work, for evangelization. And this work, this handiwork of God, we are the workers in that vineyard beautiful and uh so we look to the time when in evangelization we look to the time when god sent when god sent his holy spirit to empower his people the day of pentecost precisely on the first on the first homily on the first evangelistic speech of peter there was already all 3,000 people who turned their faith into God, to God. And then in the next, these 3,000 became 5,000 people. And during those times, Jesus' Jesus' disciples exercised the gifts of the Holy Spirit with much power and might. And because of that, the church grew rapidly, reaching all the nations of the world. What a powerful and fruitful missionary work because the Holy Spirit is there in the midst of it. The Holy Spirit is the agent of evangelization. We know this. To be effective, the new evangelization that uh, Chinka was uh, speaking about is that we must follow the methodology of Pentecost. After all, the Holy Spirit is the architect is the one who designed the blueprint of evangelization. And therefore, we need to understand that plan. We need to understand and apply that the role of the Holy Spirit in this work. The Holy Spirit, we know this, is the spirit of the Pentecost, the very power of the Pentecost, the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the empowering God for worldwide, worldwide mission. And the Holy Spirit is at work in every evangelistic mission. I have been in mission for many, many years, since 1987. I have gone to the mountains. I have gone to the cities. And everywhere I go, very clear, the Lord works miracles, works wonders. And there he is. He is at work. We are mere servants. As the church grew during the time from the disciples, the apostles, beyond the apostles and disciples, then the church became more institutionalized. And this is necessary for putting order in the work. 
And then communities began to put up institutional structures with rules of order and regulations. Now, unfortunately, with all those rules of order and regulations, people began to focus on them and they become more legalistic in approach, just like the Pharisees. They become legalistic. And these began to st stifle the free flow of the spirit. And gradually, the dimensions of Pentecost became watered down. The dimension of uh, the Holy Spirit, the power, empower, uh, empowerment of the Holy Spirit became watered down. Excuse me, I'm missing. Okay. Now, what are the effects of being there, all these regulations? What is the effect of watering down the Holy Spirit in the midst of this work? The gifts of the Spirit began to lose its prominent place. You know, before, during the early year, they were so uh, um, very powerful in using all those gifts, the healing, the miracles, you know, and then it began to loosen up. It began to be watered down. And today, what happens now? Many, to, today, many do not know the role of the Holy Spirit in evangelization. It's so easy for us to ask now, do you know the Father? You, do you know the Son? They said, yes. But when you ask, do you know the Holy Spirit? Well, they would answer, I have heard it, but I really don't know. I cannot explain to you. Many do not live out faith, do not live out the call of repentance, the call for repentance for sin. Many do not manifest anymore the empowerment by the Holy Spirit. And in fact, many Catholics even dislike the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And this is, this is really uh, prominent wherever you go. Many do not have personal relationship with Christ. Many are not aware of the call of evangelization by virtue of the sacrament of baptism. Many became what you call this uh, comfort zone Christians. Now, what is needed today? We, I believe that what we need today is a renewed infilling of the Holy Spirit. We have to renew this. In my dealings with bishops and uh, uh, priests and uh, parish councils, uh, in my work uh, moving around, I've always emphasized this because they're not talking about this anymore. There's a need for renewed <clears throat> response to the call to repentance and faith in Jesus Christ. There's a need to revisit the essence of the missionary church, that the church exists because of mission. The church is in the business of discipleship making. The church is the God's factory for disciples. <clears throat> and there's a need also for vibrant response to the call of the new evangelization. Chinka has explain it well, even our SG uh, and Kokoi mentioned this. The Holy Spirit provides the gifts that equip, that equips the Christian community to do the work of evangelization. All these gifts are meant for building up, tools for building up the church, tools for a powerful evangelization. Therefore, the church must return to the spirituality of the Holy Spirit. And how is this possible? How is this possible? In what ways would the Holy Spirit do his work among his people of today in the work of the new evangelization? Clearly, we need to know who is the Holy Spirit, 
we need to recognize the power of the Holy Spirit and we, let, we have to just accept. We have to accept that the Holy Spirit is God himself and his gifts are for our tools in evangelization work and in building the body of Christ. And we just to mention uh, 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 in brief, what are these gifts? Of course, you know them already. One is expression of wisdom, wisdom founded in the word of God and the ability to express such wisdom for teachers, pastoral leaders, and counselors. Two, expression of knowledge. <clears throat> There will be those who can delve into the mysteries of the kingdom. Reading the scripture, they will have a beautiful and uh, comprehensive understanding of the word of God. Third is faith. It moved, that faith that moves mountains and demolishes evil strongholds. Faith that allows us to, to believe and to expect what is in the future that will really happen because God wills it. It is to, to really be sure, to be certain with things we cannot see. Fourth is healing. It manifests the power and mercy of God that greatly help people to come to faith in Jesus Christ. I have many experiences in healing. One, just one that, that really, really I can't forget is one totally crippled boy. And then I asked my brothers and sisters to join me in praying over this boy. And four months after I came back into that place, the boy was already playing and running around. A 15 year old boy, the mother came to us and my, uh, and uh, tearfully she said, wow, I have here a son, brother Ed, who is diagnosed with leukemia and then we prayed over and finally that boy was healed. There is a, 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 a member of the family who was really became hopeless and finally she got sick. She couldn't eat and she would, she would really just be lying down and then we pray for healing and with counseling and that woman the next day began to uh, rise up and began to eat and began to be normal again. It's really the mighty deeds of the Lord is there. Miraculous works that manifest the greatness <clears throat> and power of God. Next is the, the sixth is the prophecy. An authentic prophet who stands in God's place and speaks his word to his people, giving them directions, corrections, Reminders, reprimand, and in order for us to move forward. Prophecy, beautiful. It's a powerful ministry. The seventh is discernment of spirits, knowing what is authentically from the spirit. There are two good things, but what's the best? It is not, discernment is not about the good things and the bad things. It's always in both good things, which is the, uh, the preference of the Lord, which is the will of the Lord. Eighth is the tongues for personal prayer and connecting to the spirit of God. You know, one of the uh, things that I really do even before any service, even during before this uh, discussion and anywhere in the mission, before praying over, before counseling, I always pray in tongues because prayer in tongues edifies you. As we pray in tongues, God edifies us enables us, empower us to do the very mission before us. And finally, interpretation of tongues for the people to understand prophetic utterances given in tongues. Hopefully some of you there are in, have this kind of gift. Now all of these gifts are distributed to many. So the empowerment of the, how, the Holy Spirit is crucial in worldwide mission. Without the Holy Spirit, there is no mission. <laughs> There's no mission to talk about. Acts 1 verse 8 it speaks about, and it says, But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, throughout Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. 
in this verse, the meet Christ and live Christ and share Christ is already there. When we receive the power, empowerment, we meet Christ. We meet him. And then once we, he comes to us, we live with him and we live and learn to live like Christ. And we learn to be holy like Christ. And which is a requirement for us in order to be witnesses, to share. We need that holiness. That is our pastoral credibility. That is our mission credibility in order to serve in the mission work. <clears throat> for the disciples of Jesus to continue with this mission, <clears throat> they appointed, they are um, equipped and empowered. They were appointed by Christ, equipped and empowered. Now, in this work of evangelization, <clears throat> We face all kinds of obstacles, physical obstacles, mental and psychological obstacles, even obstacles in our family having, you know, relationship, uh, strained relationship. But, but especially among them, the, the early Christians, they were actually bringing the good news to people who are not Christians. Here in the LCC, we're talking about bringing the word of God to people who are already in the church. Now, here, God empowers us to be bold and God empowers us to be effective for the proclamation of the gospel. Just as Peter, uh, initially when he uh, made his first homily, you know, what 3,000 were converted. Now in the face of threats from Herod, Pilate, the Gentiles, and the Jews, the community members were filled with the Holy Spirit and continued to speak the word of God with boldness. I tell you, my brothers and sisters, in, in mission work, in evangelization, this is very important. And please take note about this. You need to be in your battle position. You need to be a get out from your comfort zone and go to the battle position. And in fact, in the case of David against Goliath, David ran into the battle position. He did not walk towards the battle position. David ran into the battle position. Why did he run? Because he's filled with faith in God. He is filled with that boldness of the Lord and he's filled with that raids against the evil enemy. And so you and I, in mission work, we don't just walk, we run into our battle position. Show God that you are really there for it. And we know that we will always be victorious. Now, being sent, we start with the proclamation of the gospel. This is the missing first step. Romans 10, verses 13 to 15, it says, For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. And it continues, But how can they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how can they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone to preach? And how can people preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. Now, there are two things here. There has to be somebody to speak out to express the good news so that they hear, they believe, and they accept. That's why it's so beautiful to, to read this again and again, because the last part of this, it says, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. Right now, I ask you, right now, you're sitting there. Look at your feet. Many of us, have already imperfect feet or imperfect 
physical feet. Some nails are not there. Some nails are broken. Some uh, probably some uh, fingers are missing or crooked or distorted from the physical eye. They look imperfect. <clears throat> but you know, brothers and sisters, you are the one who goes there out there and bring the good news to those who are the least of our brethren. And God smiles on you. God smiles on those who bring good news. Because as Chinka said, God wants all of us to be saved. <clears throat> Nobody missing. No. But the irony is many Catholics today are one our Christians. They are not there on mission work. How many? I don't. <laughs> Imagine in your old parish how many people go, uh, go to mission work. Here in the Philippines, how many? I ask this question among parishioners. And you know, they will just, you know, they will look at me when I ask this. There's also this difficulty in the church today. Uh, uh, the one that I mentioned is many of us are one hour Christians because we just go to mass and even just for 45 minutes, not even one hour. And if the priest would be going beyond 15 minutes, uh, homily, then people begin to look at their watch because they are already waiting for the time when they have to go to the mall. And in fact, in some places now in the world, in first world countries, priests were instructed to limit their homily to seven minutes. So therefore, it means <clears throat> it would be only about 40, for 40 to 45 minutes, the mass, and then they go. Now, live Christ, share Christ mission supplements the lack. Can you just imagine? LCSC is designed to supplement the lack in these things so that we proclaim the gospel. We have formation as, as was said already, and we continue to, uh, to help empower the parish to become really a missionary community. <clears throat> the, the early church, lived according to the spirit of Pentecost. Beautiful. What are the elements of this? Of this? One, people have personal relationship with Jesus. They, how about today? How many of our Catholics now have personal relationship with Jesus? They don't even know that there is such thing as personal relationship with Jesus. So that when we lose that personal relationship, when we have that, we don't have that, we lack it. Therefore, our prayer becomes dry. Prayer becomes mechanical. Prayers become to uh, limit, become to be limited only in memorized prayers. But in with personal prayer or personal relationship, we deal deeply, we delve deep into this relationship so that in prayer, we talk to a friend, we talk to our God, we talk to our Savior, so that we ask God, change me, O Lord, that I may be like you. I have been in that kind of prayer many years back because I have a very bad temper and I, in several, seven years, I struggled against it. But finally, God, Grant me the patience that I need. Another element that's needed there is the word of God. Many Catholics we know are not reading the Bible. They're very ignorant of the scripture. Ignorance of the scripture is ignorance of Christ, about Christ. And so here we, we empower the Paris, the Catholics in the Paris to study and be formed. There are formation teachings that we, we give and uh, we uh, suggest and to offer to the parish. Romans 10 verse 17 says, Thus faith comes from what is heard, and what is heard comes through the word of God. So it's really important. We really know that it is really important. And then the worship, 
to be vibrant. <laughs> when we look at, we are not criticizing the Catholic Church, but we are, these are just a call for change uh, in the new evangelization. The worship needs to be vibrant. Acts 4.31 says, as they prayed, the place where they were gathered shook. And they were filled with the Holy Spirit and continued to speak the word of God with boldness. I hope that one day the praises inside the Catholic Church will be so loud and so vibrant that it can shake even the whole building, quote unquote. And then we need to, another element that we need is really going back to community life. Salvation. For us to be saved, we need a community. Because in community, that's where God speaks. By sharing our life, our struggles and our victories with our brothers and sisters in a, a sharing, personal sharing, that is already part of God's voice for us. That what is he, God did to a brother, he can also do to me. Community life is the way of God. Because when God took away God's people from Egypt, he did not bring them out one by one, but he formed them through Moses. He called them in order to be delivered from the clutches, from the tyranny in Egypt. And they went into freedom. And finally, we need the Holy Spirit the spiritual gifts of the Holy Spirit. We need to go back to this. We need really an evangelization and that is where LCAC works so hard, going back to the gifts of the Holy Spirit, put them into use because they are the perfect tools for mission work, the perfect tools. Now today we oppose the evil one backed up by the world powers is so prominent today. The richest people in the world, many of them are in cohorts with the United Nations and with other organizations. They have the power and the money. They are very aggressive in promoting their liberal and progressive agenda. And precisely, Brother Frank Padilla, our servant general, is now trying to educate us all on these issues. You will notice that his virtual teachings deals uh, very much, deal with these issues, educating us. What is the situation of the church today? They actively oppress Christians and suppress their work. Sometimes one can be intimidated. You know, brothers and sisters, in this coronavirus uh, pandemic, Satan, in the midst of all this, took away his mask. And now he's, he's there. Really, without mask, he's there, unafraid. That's why now the evil forces are there. When I was in New Zealand, people there, the women there, and the, some men were gathered together because we were in pro-life uh, um, uh, pro rally. Another group, smaller group, was there. And you know what they're shouting? The chanting? My body, my choice. Therefore, my, since this is my body, it's my right to do whatever I want to do with this body. But they forget, they forgot that the very fetus that is inside their body is not their body. It's another human being that they slaughter and murder. That's it. Romans 8, 31, against all this, says, what then shall we say to this? If God is for us, who can be against us? Indeed. If we continue the work, because we have to stand, we have to be in our battle position in this onslaught of the evil one. We have to stand. And who can be against us if God is with us? 
there is an assurance of victory that has been won already 2,000 years ago when Jesus was nailed on the cross. Hebrews 13, verse 6, Thus we may say with confidence, The Lord is my helper. I will never be afraid. What can anyone do to me? What can these uh, powers of the world do to me? That's why we, have, we don't have to fear. You know, in my in evangelization, going to missions, we meet a lot of things, a lot of uh, evil manifestations. And you know, when it happens, we just have to be confident in the Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, be still, be gone, and go back to where you belong. And just the devil, we just run away. Now, return of the spirit to the spirituality of Pentecost is about is evangelistic is, is spirituality. The new evangelization is about a return to the ways by which the church and Jesus' disciples are empowered to evangelize, which ways are unfortunately unknown to many Catholics today, and much of which are no longer operated in the church. Basically, majority of the church is innocent, ignorant about that power, that spirituality. And the beauty of this is when we talk about this in the parishes, just a few months ago before, before uh, we were hindered by the restrictions of COVID-19 pandemic, people in the parish gave us feedback. This is the first time we heard about it. Can you just imagine? Philippines is about to celebrate on March 2021, our anniversary, 500th anniversary. And yet here, people in the parishes would say, this is the first time we heard about it. And you know, brothers and sisters, it is true all over the world. It is true all over the world. That's a beautiful vineyard ready for all of us. That's why we really need to work. We really be focused on what is this mission is all about. Do Catholics still experience such vigorous and vibrant presence of God? Hopefully, yes. But as, as it is now, sorry. The answer is no. But the Holy Spirit, just uh, uh, the Holy Spirit, therefore, is our key to effective work. We need to go back to that, the, if to be effective in the renewal work. Psalm one o four, verse thirty says, "Send forth your Spirit; they are created, and you renew the face of the earth." The renewal of the Holy, the the, the of, of earth is by the Holy Spirit through you who are servants of the Lord. The Holy Spirit provides the spirituality, the charismatic spirituality that is suited for worldwide evangelization. And may I say, not just suited, but the perfect tools for worldwide evangelization. The Holy Spirit brings about unity in the body. Every one of us is given the gift in 1 Corinthians 12. According to the scripture, according to this reading, Everyone is given a gift. So therefore, my brothers and sisters, in our community, everyone has a gift. If you have a brother there or a sister who says, I have nothing, I, am no, I have no gift, that is practically telling God is a liar. Because God, when he apportions his gifts to the church, he gives everyone, so that everyone will have a meaningful service in the community. Please tell this to anyone who is there who tries to uh, turn down any offer of service. Everyone is given a gift in order to serve in the mission work. That's how God really is so wonderful in all of this. 
The church needs to rediscover, therefore, the role of the Holy Spirit in evangelization and look to the Spirit's provision, which is the spirituality, the gifts, and methodology. So in order for us to do the work of new evangelization, we just have to realize that we are called, that we are commissioned, and because of this, we need to respond to that call to new evangelization. We are called and we are equipped and empowered. Equipped and empowered. We, God gave us the tools in order to build that structure of uh, evangelization. As I've said, he is the perfect architect who designed the blueprint, who drew the blueprint of evangelization. And we just have to follow and be faithful to that blueprint. We need to understand and make use of the charismatic gifts. So that all of these, these things happen in the parish, then the parish can certainly be an able missionary community. Without the spirit of Pentecost, we will be doing the same things over and over again, lacking in power and effectiveness. And when we are lacking in power and effectiveness, we are nothing, while the evil spirit who is working there, powerfully, they're winning. So therefore, we cannot fight this war, this battle alone. We need to be in the spirit. The spirit is in us, according to Ezekiel 36, verses 26 to 28. <clears throat> the new evangelization cannot be a matter of just human will, human power, human energy, doing the same things and expecting a different result. There has to be something more, more than us, because we are facing in evangelization a declared war. When you and I go into evangelization, you yourself joins God on a declared war. There has to be something more and something different and something new. And the new evangelization can only be fruitful as we return to the old methodology of the Holy Spirit. It can only work well. It can only yield fruit if we go back to the old methodology of the Holy Spirit. As I've said, God is the architect of effective evangelization. When the disciples of Jesus were filled with the Spirit, they began to worship in power and vibrancy. In, it is the absence of these two elements, among others, in the Catholic Church, that even our youth are leaving the church in droves. There is an exodus of Catholics. One among the reasons there is our worship is less understood our worship, many Catholics do not even understand what is transubstantiation. <clears throat> we need really to go back there. We need really to be educated in our faith. That's why, as I've said, an irony, Catholics are one of our Christians. As long as I've gone to the church on Sunday in one hour, I have done my part. <laughs> what an irony. Brothers and sisters, let's go back and bring those people into the consciousness that being a Christian, a practicing Christian, is not just going to church. There's a great need for that. <clears throat> New evangelization is a call to the whole church for everyone. The laity, <clears throat> the clergy, and the, even the uh, religious. All of us need renewal in the spirit. Today, not only the lady has concerns in faith, not only the lady has concerns about the, the church. And we know, and you know, that many clergy now abuse is, has abused scandal cases in the West. Number of dis dissident uh, 
clerics is alarming. In fact, in the United States, they say, I think it's documented that 50%, more than 50% of the priests are members of the LGBT culture. There are bishops and priests who do not speak out openly and boldly against the culture of death. And yeah, it's practically betraying the faith. I have just spoken to a brother who is uh, in Canada and at three o'clock then when we talked, Dawn, he was still praying because the Philippines now has a super typhoon. Uh, that's practically arriving in the Philippines in a few hours, as I spoke, speak to you now. And he was talking about the onslaught of Satan that has already successfully taken hold of many clergy. The church now is uh, experiencing so much struggle. That's why we have to be educated in what's happening now. We should not be uh, uneducated so that when we hear it, oh, that's the church. I abandoned the church. This is no way. This is not the time for you and I to abandon the church. This church is the true church of Christ. He founded it. And therefore, we have to stand by it even in the midst of difficulties. We are God's people. We cannot abandon the ship. Let's stay on. If there is war, let's fight it together. The liberal and dissident nuns abandoned their good habits. We all need to experience a renewal and feeling of the Holy Spirit if we need to face all these struggles. The Holy Spirit, my brothers and sisters, is the agent of evangelization. The Holy Spirit is the powerhouse in evangelization. The Holy Spirit is the one that moves us into mission work. The Holy Spirit brings people to personal conversion and transformation in Christ. He touches minds and hearts. He renews the hearts and minds of people, especially for nominal Christians. Praise God, you and I have been renewed already. Praise God that God has enriched our lives now. How about those people there, the nominal Christians? God is using us, you and I, in order to bring the good news to those people. This must be known among the Catholics today. All these things are to be discussed. The spirituality of Pentecost, it must be, edu uh, be given as education to the Catholics today. This must be known among the Catholics if we are to live in the spirit and to function as instruments of the spirit in the work of renewal. <clears throat> LCSC is tasked by the spirit to support our mother church on these things that we just discussed. This is why in one prophecy, it says, LCSE is my gift to the church. When I heard this, I was struck by this prophecy. And I began to understand that there is no work right now, at least here in or wherever I go, there's no work like that of LCSC that brings the work into the hands of the parish so that the parish accepts it as their own, all for and by the parish. The technology is given to them so that they themselves can build their own mission team in order to pursue the work of evangelization inside their parishes. In the Philippines, one parish would be, would contain about 20, 10 or 20 chapels, small chapels. And less, there are less people who, are go, who go there in the peripheries, to the peripheries in order to bring good news. That's one of the focus now of the, 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 the LCSE here in the Philippines, but 
I believe that the peripheries in your area is not the same as the peripheries in the Philippines. But the peripheries in your area are those people who are there even near you, who are <laughs> marginalized because of their own faith. They don't want to come in. I can understand you people there, my brothers and sisters in India, because your situation is a lot more difficult. One family can consist of many of mixed cultures, mixed uh, 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 religions or faith. And how would we do it? And there's a question, in fact, earlier about this. What will I do? If I speak about Christ, they will fight me. <laughs> I will become their enemy. It will become an animosity. But I tell you, my brothers and sisters, <clears throat> before telling them about Christ, before telling those people who are not Catholics in your family, in your neighborhood, before telling them about Jesus Christ, show them first that Christ is in you. Walk the talk and be like Christ. So that when they see you, they look at you, they hear you, they will know that you are a good man. And they can ask, why are you good? Now you can tell them that it's because Jesus is in me. Evangelization is not just about words. Evangelization is, is by walking the talk. Evangelization can also be how people perceive you. If a non-Christian sees you and without knowing the goodness in you is Christ, they will begin to ask. And then you speak about Christ. And because when you live the life of Christ, you automatically gain pastoral integrity. And because you have that integrity, pastoral integrity, they are ready to listen to you. And I hope this sharing, my brothers and sisters, will give us more insights about what we're doing in Live Christ, Share Christ mission. It's a privilege to speak with you, my brothers and sisters. It's a privilege to speak with my fellow workers in the vineyard. It's a privilege to speak with you, holy warriors of the Lord. God bless you all.